friends, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here on Vancouver Island on the west coast of Canada. I hope everybody is having a great midweek so far. Welcome to all of our viewers. Hi, Tatiana. Welcome, I am anywhere. Hello, Ken Russell and Rajneesh. Welcome to our members. In this class, everyone, we are focusing on IELTS speaking part one. The first part of the IELTS speaking section and speaking interview. And this part is a um, couple of questions about you to get to know you, to identify you, and then some questions on a general topic. Now that general topic can be a million different ideas, categories. Today's uh, topic, general topic, will be talking about your teachers. Hence that uh, cute little clip art on our thumbnail. Um, this lesson, everybody, is brought to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Check us out there. Um, for the general IELTS, visit us at gieltshelp.com. On both of those websites, we've got lots of materials to help you prepare for your IELTS exam and make sure that you get a great score so that you don't have to sit the IELTS again and again. It is not a good idea to just prepare on your own with free materials randomly found on the internet. I don't recommend it. Um, this is our academic IELTS website here. You can click this big red button to join our premium IELTS package. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access. And you can use this code ultimate nine from one of our recent releases to get a 25% discount and get access to all of our interactive lessons, our lesson videos, our exams, and lots of native English help with um, answers to all of your questions. For general IELTS, it's this green background. Click this big red button there to join our premium IELTS package. Again, it's a one-time payment. We are an official um, IELTS test registration center and certified agents, so you're in great hands with us. We help hundreds of students every day improve and pass their IELTS exam. So again, uh, remember this code, ultimate nine, for that 25% uh, discount off of that premium IELTS package. Welcome Arda, hi Rashika, good to see many more students in the class. Welcome of Zalshak from Uzbekistan and I see Carolina, our chat moderator, just joined in as well, that's fantastic. Um, we have apps for your mobile phone, Academic IELTS Help, uh, for the academic, general IELTS help for general. The apps link to the websites so that you can learn from your web account and you can learn from the app from the same materials. Um, you can check us out on Instagram, IELTS underscore A help, G IELTS help for vocabulary, tips, tricks, and lots more information. And if you have questions, all you need to do is send me an email my email is adrian at aehelp.com. Just send me an email, you'll get an answer within 48 hours, usually less than 24 hours. We're usually on the ball. All right, students, again, just a reminder, um, we've had this now for the past uh, week or two weeks um, where we do not have classes on Wednesdays. So instead, we now have classes on Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, um, and um, they're longer classes, they're 90 minute classes. And as you've probably realized, we're releasing more videos. So we have more time to work on HD videos for the channel, so we're releasing more of those. Um, this is our streaming schedule for today and the next two days uh, from 21st to the 23rd. Uh, right now we'll have speaking part one, that is for everyone. Uh, tomorrow, uh, a little bit earlier, um, we'll have writing task two that will be for members. It'll be a fun new 
uh, task two topic. Writing task two is kind of the same for general and academic, so no need to worry about that. Then we'll have um, a reading session tomorrow for our subscribers. And then on Saturday, we'll have speaking part two combined with a bit of Q&A for members um, and then speaking part three for everyone. So that's kind of what's going on. Um, that's what you can look forward to. Lots of learning to be had. We focus on helping you improve your English along with your communication. So keep in mind, students, that to get high bands on IELTS, and we're talking like band seven uh, to nine, okay? It's not enough to just speak in English, <laughs> unfortunately, okay? So to get high bands on IELTS, band seven uh, to nine, which basically means a good to an expert uh, user of English, uh, you must prove both uh, good uh, English skills, and by that I mean like vocabulary and grammar, and uh, you have to prove good uh, communication skills which means accurate uh, and detailed answers to questions, okay? That's what you have to do. So you can basically think about this as improving your band score in two ways. One, improve your uh, English, so improve your grammar, improve your vocabulary, use more phrasal verbs, use uh, more paraphrasing, more synonyms. And, uh, and then on the other side is communication, where you're answering the question directly, specifically, you're giving clear explanations, and you're including some nice, smooth examples um, with your answers to give strength, give emphasis to what you're saying. Um, when I say smooth examples, what do I mean, students? And we have a video on our channel about this. Some of you have probably seen it. So you want to include what we call smooth examples, especially in part one, um, because part one's about you. So it's pretty easy to include some personal examples in part one. And if there's ever an IELTS examiner or sorry, trainer that says, oh, you don't, you shouldn't do that. You'll lose marks. It's not true. I've done it. I've trained lots of people to do it. They all get better marks. So it's absolutely a good idea to include smooth examples, especially in part one, um, because in part one, it's about you, okay? What do I mean though by smooth? So what does it mean to include a uh, smooth uh, example, okay? And this is actually a very important tip, believe it or not, it can have a pretty big impact on your, um, overall uh, result, okay? So sometimes um, students will give an example, like they'll say, uh, for example, I played tennis for an hour yesterday, okay? Is that a smooth example or not, right? Or they might say something like, for instance, I played tennis for an hour yesterday. Okay. Tatiana says a smooth example is an example explaining what you mentioned is done. Okay. I think I get your vibe, Tatiana. Yeah, um, absolutely uh, the example should be real world. It doesn't have to be the truth, but it should be believable. Uh, I didn't personally play an hour of tennis yesterday. Um, I wish I had, I love tennis, but uh, I didn't play for an hour yesterday, but it's believable, it's a personal example. Okay, uh, This is these two are not smooth examples. because they are introduced, okay? Let's make these correct grammatically. So these are not smooth because they are introduced with um, 
uh, for example. Okay, now we have um, a video again on our channel that says don't say for example, and there's a reason for that. Uh, IELTS examiners actually get scared when students say for example, they're like, Ooh. Um, and the reason for that is they fear the student will just go blah, 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 blah. For example, I played tennis yesterday with one of my friends. He's a really cool guy. And we played tennis for like an hour. It was a lot of fun. Um, we, the match was really good. I threw up a couple of great serves. I hit a couple of nice backhands. And then um, once when the ball flew out of the court, I had to go um, chase it down and jump over this fence. And I didn't realize it was actually somebody's yard. They had this big dog. So I had to like try to steal the tennis ball back from this big dog and then get back to the tennis court. But it was really scary. And then um, the neighbor like called the cops because they thought I was a robber. And then and then the examiner's just like, whoa, 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 whoa. Next question, please. Um, okay, so they interrupt you and, and that happens. Uh, it's You probably think that's kind of weird and funny, but that actually happens, especially when people are nervous, okay? And on the IELTS exam, it's common and normal to be nervous. And when people are nervous, what they tend to do is they tend to overspeak, especially when they get going on this kind of a rant um, uh, about, uh, uh, using for example and then just going and going and going okay as I just did there okay so the trick is to just give the example okay so the trick is to just give the example without introducing it and keep it to one sentence Like, um, I played a fun game of tennis yesterday. Okay. So if the IELTS examiner is asking you about um, what sports you like and you say, well, I love to play racket sports. Um, in fact, I played a fun game of tennis yesterday. Uh, then you, you stop, okay? The examiner isn't asking you about your adventures um, with the uh, vicious dog that lives next to the uh, tennis court, right? Um, and so if you start going off topic, you might think that you're getting scores for being fluent, um, but you're not. You're actually losing scores for coherence rather than gaining scores uh, for fluency. So just give the example, okay? Practice just giving the example. And we're going to do that today. So I really want to hear some nice examples as we get into today's uh, speaking practice and speaking practice we shall. Um, I will call uh, our viewers and we'll talk to each other and we'll learn some great ways to answer these questions. So you go to your IELTS speaking test you get there one hour before your exam starts. Why one hour? Well, for multiple reasons. Uh, you get comfortable with uh, your surroundings. You go to the washroom if you need to. You start to get a bit you know, relaxed, get a bit of the stress gone. Um, then you find another candidate who's hanging around going do 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 I'm waiting for my exam. You find that candidate and you say, hey, good morning. Are you here for your IELTS exam? And then you'll say, yes, I am. Are you? They'll most likely ask you back and then you'll say, I am too. Um, I learned this strategy that we should practice some speaking before the speaking test just to, you know, get confident. Would you like to practice with me and the person hopefully will say yeah sure that's a great idea thank you for asking and then you find a nice quiet place you sit down and then you pull out some questions on your phone or on a piece of paper in your pocket and then you start practicing okay then uh, you have to register uh, for your IELTS speaking so you do that 20 minutes before the interview you go in um, there will be some examination proctors who are there as assistants. Um, if they speak in a language other than English, stay in English. Say, yes, I'm here for my IELTS. Uh, please speak to me in English. I want to keep thinking and talking in English. And they'll say, oh yeah, sure, sorry. I'm, I should be speaking English anyway. That's what I'm instructed to do. 
And then um, you register. And then after that, again, go to the washroom and have a mental checklist, okay? So have a checklist of some important tips, okay? Even on a piece of paper. So on a piece of paper, have five points um, to uh, remind you of ways to score a high band, band okay? So um, number one, I you should always think, uh, answer plus explanation uh, plus example, okay? All right, and then number two, maybe you'll have something like use the question in the answers, okay? If you had a million dollars, what would you buy? If I had a million bucks, and buy a house. Okay, um, and then number three, um, paraphrase. Paraphrase uh, the question. Okay, um, how often uh, do you go for a walk? I frequently take a stroll, especially in the evenings when I have some time. So paraphrase the question, take a walk, take a stroll, okay? Uh, students, this is a speaking class, so make sure that you're not just listening, but you're speaking and repeating, okay? So when I say words like go for a walk and take a stroll, just repeat, even if you know them, strengthen these uh, synonyms, strengthen this paraphrasing in your mind. Hey, hi, Eugene. Look at those emojis lighting up the chat. I'm doing fantastic, getting better by the day. Still got a cough, but I'm holding my own, so I'm doing all right. Thank you for asking. Okay, um, and then you might have a couple more points. Uh, like uh, you might have some specific points, like answer all questions on the cue card in 90 seconds and make connections among answers. Okay, so you might have a list like this um, on your piece of paper. Uh, and you look at it and you read it once or twice. Um, and then you're like, okay, okay, these are the points. I'm gonna pay attention to these. I practice these. I know I need to do these. Now I'm gonna focus on these and I'm not going to worry too much about the examiner. So you uh, then are now ready for your IELTS speaking interview. You go in to the exam room and you are met by a person that's kind of like me, okay? They will likely be a native uh, speaker of the English language or they might just be an expert user of the English language um, and not a native speaker, which can happen and that's totally fine, okay? They're all trained, they know what to do, Questions are there, they read the questions, they're marking you while you're speaking, okay? Um, think about the examiner as your grandfather, or your grandmother. Just picture this happy elderly person who loves you and they will accept you no matter uh, what kind of mistakes you make and the sun will shine tomorrow. Take a deep breath and get ready uh, to communicate clearly and accurately. All right, students, so you go in and uh, the examiner will begin just like this. Please have a seat. You can say, thank you. And then they will say, and now we will start the speaking section of the IELTS exam. It has three parts. I will give you instructions for each. I'm recording this uh, for clerical purposes. Uh, we are currently conducting this exam. In Berlin, the time is 14 o'clock. This is candidate number 97318457. And this is examiner number 97381. Uh, for part one, I will ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. May I see your identification? It's always your, it's 95% of the time it will be their first question. Sometimes they'll actually lead with asking you for your name, but um, most of the time they will ask you for your ID. You have to show them the same identification that you used to check in for the exam. So may I see your identification, okay? 
Um, right away, this answer should be in your pocket. You should be able to answer it quickly, clearly, naturally, without any mistakes. Okay, so you might give an answer something like, um, absolutely. Here is uh, my passport that I used um, at check-in uh, 20 minutes ago. And here is the page with my credentials. Please take a look. Is it too much? No, it's professional, it's clear, it's accurate, it's detailed, it's showing lexical resource, it's showing some numbers like 20 minutes, it's showing clear communication, it shows that you know what you're doing, it shows confidence, all of those, all right? Um, repeat after me, so may I see your identification? Repeat questions as well as answers, right? So may I see your identification? Absolutely. Here is my passport that I used to check in 20 minutes ago. And here's the page with my credentials. Please take a look. Now, here's a nice little tip or trick right away, everybody. Um, be 10% melodramatic. Um, by being 10% dramatic, uh, you're um, going to sound clear and um, you're going to be more confident. You should practice this. Um, if you've ever taken acting class, um, so to practice for theater, the stage, uh, for making a movie, I know a lot of people love to do selfies on Instagram and um, on TikTok and such. Uh, you'll notice that all of the really popular ones, people are like dramatic. Like they're like, whoa, um, whoa. Uh, so they're dramatic. Um, people like dramatic people. Uh, we like to be entertained. We like to feel the confidence of the speaker. And that comes from melodrama. It's a fundamental skill taught in uh, acting school. So in the IELTS speaking interview, you are in fact, in some sense, acting. You're acting your best English, okay? Um, so be a little bit melodramatic, all right? So absolutely, here's my passport that I used at check-in 20 minutes ago, um, and here's the page with my credentials. Please have a look, okay? So don't go crazy overboard. Don't be like, well, absolutely, okay? They'll think you're crazy, you've lost your mind. They still might give you a good band score, but it might be awkward. Um, but 10%, 10%, okay? All right? Uh, Rajneesh says, gladly, here's my passport, which I used a month before for registration of this uh, IELTS exam. Please have a look. All right, Rajneesh, that, that works. Uh, Rashika says, yes, here's my passport. I'm looking at uh, our chat here, everybody. So um, I can't make it bigger, unfortunately. YouTube doesn't allow me for it, but uh, I'm just uh, reading out some of the answers that people have given here, which is great. Um, Rashika says, yes, here's my passport that I used to register for this exam a couple of weeks ago. Please have a look. Uh, Shabnam is asking, what do you mean by make connections among answers? Shabnam, I will show you that shortly. Okay. Kamal says, yes, gladly. Here's my passport that I used to register for this exam. Please have a look. Yeah, that works. Okay, some good answers there. Okay, and then um, the uh, next question that you are asked always um, is, what is your full name? Okay, uh, they usually ask you that while you still have your passport out. So they're asking you for your full name. Um, and then you can say something like, my whole name is, uh, Francesca 
um, Irene Dominguez. I'm just making, I'm totally just making this up. Okay, um, so my whole name is Francesca Irene uh, Dominguez. Um, I like to go by my middle name. So please uh, call me Irene. All right, hello Irene. A song about that. Um, okay, so yeah, just uh, clear community. I mean, you have to be able to introduce yourself professionally and clearly and accurately for a high band score. Sometimes students, I've heard this from from candidates, from IELTS students. They say like, oh, I heard they they're not marking me for the first couple questions, like the passport question of my name. Uh, yeah, they are. If you can't introduce yourself without making mistakes, give your name without making a mistake, uh, you're not looking at a band eight or a band nine, that's for sure. Um, it's just hard to convince an IELTS examiner that you're a very good to expert user of any language if you're not able to clearly introduce yourself and ask a listener um, or a speaking partner what you want to be called, right? Okay, so again, repeat after me. What is your full name? My whole name is Francesca Irene Dominguez. I like to go by my middle name, so please call me Irene. All right, Irene. Um, now I'll ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. Okay, Rajneesh says, my full name is Rajneesh Bishnoi. You can call me by my first name, Rajneesh. Yeah, it's more polite, Rajneesh, to say, please call me, please call me. Um, Ken says, my full name is Ken Russell Balang. Uh, you can call me either by my first name, Ken, or Russell. All right, Russell. I like the name Russell. I'll call you Russell. Um, Amrit says, my whole name is Amrit Paul Singh. Please just call me Amrit for short. All right, Amrit, very nice. Okay. Mandeep says, my first name is Mandeep and my last name is Telukuntal. I like people calling uh, me Manny for short. Yeah, not B, but me. I like people calling me Manny for short. Please do the same. All right. Uh, Viral Videos says, my full name is Sammy Ula. Please just call me by my first name only, Sammy. Yeah. Jane Wanjiku says, certainly, and this is my ID that I used to register for the exam last week. That's for the previous question. Very nice. Okay, students, good, good. You've got some good answers there. Um, watch every little detail to make sure that they uh, are correct and accurate. Okay, and then the examiner might ask you about your hobbies. They might ask you about um, your work or your study, or they might do something like this. All right, um, for part one, I'll ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better. Um, who do you live with? Okay. So uh, you have to give a full sentence answer. I um, live uh, with my uh, partner, uh, Andy, and uh, my two cats, uh, Fuzzball, and orange, I don't know. I'm not that great at making up <laughs> cat names. Um, but thank you, Engin, for the super chat donation. That's awesome. So who do you live with? I live with my partner, Andy, and my two cats, Fuzzball and Orange, uh, in a two-bedroom uh, condo. Just a 10-minute walk. Um, from this exam center. Sure, uh, details, okay? So um, I live with my partner, Andy, and my two cats, Fuzzball and Orange, in a two bedroom condo, just a 10 minute walk from this exam center. Clear, accurate, smooth, fluent, comfortable, don't overthink it, don't overspeak it, okay? Arda says, I live with my parents and my brother. Okay, so let's take a look at what some people are saying here. I'm looking at um, the chat here. 
you're able to zoom in on it, you might be able to read these with me. So who do you live with? Arda says, I live with my parents and my brother. I've been living with them since birth, but I guess I will have to move to another place uh, for university soon. And most probably I'll be living on my own within the next year. All right, Arda, good. Make sure you say that fluently and then stop. Don't say any more, otherwise they might interrupt you, especially for these first couple of questions. You don't want to overdo it, okay? I've been living with them since my birth, even though it's present perfect, Arda. It's a bit awkward. Um, intuitively, I would assume that you've been living with your parents and brothers since birth. The only time it might be worth mentioning that kind of idea is if you actually haven't been, okay? However, I've also lived with my grandparents for the past uh, year um, to uh, learn another language or something, okay? All right. Jiang, nice uh, paraphrasing. Uh, Jiang says, I reside with my family members in a two-story private house in the middle of town. Nice. Okay. Maybe mention those family members. Okay. So with my family members, who are they? Brothers, cousins, sisters, uncles, aunts. Um, Simran says, I live with my parents and my older brother in a three-bedroom apartment. Good. Nice detail. Uh, Yashin says, right now... I live by myself, but I used to live with my parents two years ago. Um, Yashin, I would uh, probably give a quick explanation of why you live by yourself. So Yashin, you might say something like, right now I live by myself because I am um, studying in university and I'm a bachelor or a bachelorette, okay? So if you are male and you live by yourself, uh, you are a bachelor, okay? So, bachelor, man, living alone, usually, okay? And bachelorette, a woman living alone, okay? All right, uh, note vocabulary, when I give you vocabulary, um, that's vocabulary that will get you lexical resource marks. So mark it down and practice it, use it. Okay, um, and then uh, the next question, uh, where do you go to relax? Okay, don't overthink it. Okay, um, so I uh, like to uh, go to my bedroom uh, when I need some uh, me time uh, to be with my own thoughts and to take a bit of a break from the uh, stresses of life. I feel comfortable and at peace in my room. All right, and then you could put in a smooth example. Um, I was doing that, or I was doing this just before coming uh, to this exam. Okay, nice and smooth. So um, one more time, where do you go to relax? I like to go to my bedroom when I need some me time uh, to be with my own thoughts and to take a bit of a break from the stresses of life. I feel comfortable and at peace in my room. I was doing this just before coming to this exam. All right, me time, time for myself. Okay, so keep it simple. It could be the park near your home. It could be a library. It could be the beach. Um, so there are lots of places where we can go and just chill out and relax. You might go to your favorite cafe, right? Um, the trick is not to overthink it. So if you think of one cafe, go with it, okay? Explain it. There's a really nice quiet cafe half a block from my house. It's usually empty, um, especially in the mornings, and I like to go there and drink a warm cup of tea uh, to just unwind uh, for a little bit before starting my hectic work day. All visual. I'm just making it all up. Okay, all right, um, let's see. So here we go. 
Uh, do, 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 do. Tatiana says to get some rest from my daily routine at work I go for a stroll um, to the nearby park which is about uh, 10 minutes from my uh, place um, okay LD says I usually go to the rooftop to unwind um, at around 5 o'clock in the afternoon I have a good view of the sunset as long as the weather is good and not dreary. Okay, LD, careful not to over speak because you have some mistakes near the end there. Um, so keep it simple. Be concise too, students. So say it in a short way, okay? Say an answer, give an explanation, give an example, but say it short, say it concise. Concise communication is good communication. Mandeep says, to ease myself, I usually go for a walk with my friends every day in the evening after work last night. I spent a good time um, with my close mates having a chit chat while um, strolling near my home. Okay. Jiang says, I prefer to the, go to the top of my home um, so I can have a bird's eye view of the whole city um, while snacking on some chips and biscuits. Okay. Bird's eye view. It's not bird eye view, bird eyes view. It's bird's eye view. It's like possessive, right? The eye view of the bird. Bird's eye view. And we usually write that like this, Jiang. Okay, bird's eye view means a topographic view. So a view from top down. Okay. Um, and it's written um, as this, uh, Jiang. So nice vocabulary there. Um, We'll teach it to everybody, okay? It's a bird's, and very technically it'd be a bird's eye view, okay? So like that. It is a, a topographic uh, view. There's a nice word for you, topographic from the top down. Uh, topographic view, uh, looking down, like a map view, if you will. And you get that from the top of a house. Okay, everyone, that's good. And vocabulary is important. So when the examiner introduces the topic, they'll say, okay, let's talk about teachers. Okay, um, so as soon as you hear that word teachers, as soon as you hear this kind of a topic word, ideally, um, you quickly reference your mind. So you look inside your head and you think of synonyms. For this word because you know that you're going to be talking about teachers so um, you immediately think about other ways to say the word teacher so you might think of the word trainer uh, professor okay what other words um, are uh, uh, synonymous with teacher even if it's not the exact same maybe something that's uh, similar so what else would be uh, similar to uh, teacher Okay, give me some other words here. All right. Yeah, very good. So Amu says maybe tutor, mentor. Yeah, there's lots of ways. Tutor, mentor, nice. Coaches, very good, Jiang. Coach, coach is a type of teacher. Yeah. Instructor, very good. Educator, nice. Master, all right, less common, but sure. Okay. Thanks for the super chat donation, Amrit. I appreciate that. I'm getting better. I'm still not 100%, but definitely much better than I was last week, okay? All right, so we've got some good uh, synonyms there, and you should also be thinking of other words. So you should be thinking of words like schools, uh, peers, uh, pupils, uh, students, and the like, okay? All right. Um, so then uh, the examiner will say, okay, let's talk about teachers. Uh, who was your favorite teacher? Give me a nice uh, full sentence answer. Uh, for this one. So who was your favorite teacher? Um, okay.
All right. So there's my answer. Okay. So who was your favorite teacher? That's tough to say because I've had many great teachers over the years. Okay. I usually tell students not to really have this kind of unnecessary leading expression, but in this case, it's not unnecessary. It's truthful. Okay. So you should only use this kind of uh, leading idea like that's tough to say because I've had many great teachers over the years. You should only say that if it's true. You shouldn't just say it if it's not true because the examiner will feel that you're just trying to fill space. But if it's true um, and natural, then by all means. Um, that's tough to say because I've had many great teachers over the years, but perhaps Ms. Jenkins, my grade 11 drama teacher, was my all-time favorite because she made learning so much fun and she was very empathetic. Notice um, that I'm reflecting the question, okay? It's very important. Your favorite teacher, my all-time favorite, right? You have to reflect um, in your answers the question. Very important, okay? The teacher I adored the most, the teacher who I loved the most, okay? So you have to, in one way or another, reflect the question in your answer. It's super, super important, okay? All right, um, we've got some answers here by some of our viewers. Let's take a look. I am anywhere says, my favorite teacher is CS, sir, because his English is awesome and he is very helpful uh, for me and my classmates and I'm very familiar with him and he always tries to make us understand the chapters in English and when we are so tired he understands us and gives us time to do work he is the best um, okay I am anywhere it's not a bad answer be more concise okay so my favorite teacher is CS because he is an excellent uh, English instructor who understands his class gives breaks as necessary and everybody can easily understand him okay so a little bit more concise all right string together your ideas all right gordon Jung says my favorite teacher is my father who has educated me a lot ranging from being a responsible and honest person uh, to doing everyday household chores in fact he taught me how to trim the hedges just last week Okay. All right. Yeah, that's a good answer. Give an example. All right. Okay. Uh, Simran says, I vividly remember when I was in college, Miss Ginny uh, used to be my favorite teacher. She taught us physics and I like her way of teaching. Um, it's uh, easy to understand with lots of practical examples. Good Simran. A couple of small corrections there. Be careful. Don't generalize your answers. If I'm asking you about who is your favorite teacher, don't talk about us and your classmates. Talk about yourself. It's your favorite teacher. All right, Lucille Chen says, Mrs. Lee, a math teacher, uh, is my all-time favorite. When I was bullied in primary school, she was the only one who stood up for me. Aside from that, she was always considerate and empathetic. I don't know if it's aside from that because being empathetic and considerate is a part of that. So she was very considerate and empathetic. She stood up for me. Okay, When somebody um, protects you from your surroundings, they stand up for you. Okay, Keep that in mind. So. Uh, learn this expression okay so to stand up for someone okay um, to defend a person all right so to stand up for someone to defend a person remember that all right use it Okay, everyone, so I think you get the idea and I think we can benefit even more now by uh, practicing together. So again, um, remember this code, ultimate nine uh, on our website for that 25% discount off of our already very competitively priced courses. They're not expensive. 
It won't cost you nearly as much as the IELTS and they'll definitely help you avoid uh, taking the test time and again. But for now, let's focus on uh, volunteers for speaking. And this is where I need like an echo sound effect. Volunteers for speaking, volunteers. Um, okay, echo, echo. Um, all right, so this is how we do it. Okay, so go to aehelp.com. I'll show you where that is. Uh, it's right here. Okay, aehelp.com. This is your academic IELTS website. You can go to gieltshelp.com. It's the green one. Okay, either one is okay. Um, then uh, click on one of these two buttons to create um, your account. Uh, green one, free account. Red one, premium account, paid but well worth it. Um, and then when you uh, create your account, click on my student account. When you create the account, it'll actually log you in automatically, I believe. Um, end the tour, take the tour when you have time. Don't take the tour right now. Focus on the class. And then you've got all these awesome um, materials. So you've got your computer-based practice exams um, and uh, you've got your uh, full interactive course. It's mobile friendly, so you can use it on your phone, especially if you get the app. Then it's no problem there. You've got your study plans. You've got test books. Um, you've got lesson videos, lots of them, standard format, HD format, depending on what kind of a connection you have. Um, and then um, you've got um, more and more, but uh, what we're looking for here is this, uh, let me show you exactly, um, is this uh, student partner speaking, that's just above my head there, that student partner uh, speaking. Um, you click on that student partner speaking, student partner speaking, and then uh, you say, okay, I'm going to speak with Adrian, and uh, I accept and start speaking, and then you get into this little piece here, which is our online chat system. Let me put on my ears. And, uh, and then you will see me as master, um, and you'll see these three buttons, the blue and the two green. Um, use the blue button to send me a message, say, I want to volunteer, and then I can connect with you, and other students will be able to hear you, and then I'll be able to say, hey, let's speak, let's talk a little bit. Um, let's do that. So I can see Yas here at the top is pinging me. Let's see if... Yes, is ready. Yes, yes, of course. Yes, are you ready? So let's see if uh, Yes is ready to volunteer here and then uh, we will begin. Yes, you are. Okay, Yes. Um, hello? Hi, Yes. Hello, hello, yeah. How are you? Um, I'm great, thank you. How are you? I'm doing much better than last week. I'm not 100% yet. I'm getting over a bad case of the flu or COVID or something, but uh, much better now. Yes, great, great. Um, where are you right now? I'm from Morocco. From Morocco, right on. Yeah. I'd love to visit there someday. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Morocco looks beautiful. Um, okay, and yeah. yes, uh, why are you taking the IELTS exam? Um, it's a university requirement. That's uh, the only reason why I'm taking it. Okay. Well, good news. Um, other than a university requirement, as long as you do a good job on the IELTS, it is a very nice addition to have to your uh, CV or your resume. And um, Absolutely. if you get like a band seven, eight or nine on the IELTS exam, and IELTS exams are usually valid for two years. Um, but even if you did the IELTS five years ago and you got a band eight. Um, it's great to put on your resume and say, hey, I'm considered a very good to expert user of the English language. So um, so there's some other benefits to look forward to, yes. Than just, Absolutely, yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> All right, may I For ask, sure. what are you studying in university? Uh, I graduated last year, but I'm, uh, I was studying English linguistics. Oh, okay, so right up your alley then. 
right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, yes, um, a lot of uh, English teaching jobs around the world um, will require a band 8.5 on the IELTS exam as well. Oh, I see. So that's a, that's a good benchmark to have. All right, yes. So I will right. um, conduct a bit of the interview with you, just like the official IELTS exam, and I'll take some notes and then give you some feedback. How does that sound? Sounds good, sure, yeah. Okay, then let's do this. So welcome to right. the speaking section of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner uh, for this part of the test. May I see your identification? Oh, yes, absolutely. Here is my ID that I used to register. Please take a look. And what is your full name? Uh, my first name is Yasin, and my last name is Marjan. But please just call me by my first name, Yasin. Okay, Yasin. I will ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. Uh, let's talk about teachers. Who was your favorite teacher? Um, I would say that my English teacher was my most favorite. Um, he was a high school teacher and he was really optimistic and would always encourage us to raise our hands. Where do you learn from a teacher? I would say that uh, you learn from a teacher at formal institutions like uh, university, uh, school, language centers. They are, these are some of the, um, the places that you can learn from a teacher. Okay, I'll stop there. All right. Okay, um, your English is fantastic, Yasin. Um, oh. So let me give you some feedback. Okay, um, I would, I'm, I'm a, maybe I'm, I'm a picky person, but I would grade you an 8.5, uh, although I think some examiners might give you as high of a score as nine and some eight. Um, and it's really tricky when you're in these higher band scores, okay? So when you get into the band eight, and band nine categories, it becomes very subjective to the examiner, okay? So um, it okay. depends a lot on the examiner's understanding of what those band scores actually mean. And although examiners are trained really well, there's always going to be some subjective difference, especially at that band eight, band nine level. Um, right. So uh, your fluency, your pronunciation, your grammatical range accuracy, uh, these are all band nine, to be honest with you. Um, I'm pleased to hear that. Yeah, yeah <laughs> where, where I'm um, taking a mark is for your coherence. So it's purely for your communication. And uh, my training is in psychology and I work a lot in communication training as well. So there's just some elements that I really pick at when I'm um, being hypercritical. Uh, so right. let me tell you what that is, okay? So that I'm not just speaking into the cloud here. Sure, um, sure, yeah. So I asked you who was your favorite teacher, and you said, I would say that my English teacher was my most favorite. He was a high school teacher, and he was most optimistic, and he would always encourage us to uh, raise our hands. Okay, so you used some nice language there. Can you guess what my problem is with this answer? Mm, uh, did not give an example. I'm not really sure. I don't really know who he is. So if I were to try to find this teacher, I'd have a virtually impossible task. I don't know his name. I don't know the school that he taught at. So um, uh, I'm missing. I'm missing details for clarity here. I want to I be see. empathetic with you as as the communicator. And to be empathetic with you, I need to be drawn into your story, right? So um, just simply adding a name um, already will make it much better. So give, give your English teacher a name. What's your English teacher's name? Mr. Rachel. Mr. Rachel? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so if I say, I would say that my English teacher, Mr. Rachel, was my most favorite. He was a high school 
uh, teacher in grade 11. Okay, so let's give it a number. Just then I can put it more into context. High school is at least two grades, sometimes three, depending on your school. Um, and um, then we can give it a bit more detail. Okay, so I would say that my English teacher, Mr. Rachel, was my most favorite. He was a high school teacher in grade 11, and he was a, uh, most optimistic, and he, was, he would always encourage us to raise our hands, uh, which made classes very interactive. All right. So just that slight bit of extra detail, now I can be like, okay, that's expert communication. But it wasn't just that one response where I was basing my marks. I wouldn't be that much of a jerk where I would just be like, oh, okay, that's a bad day. That's a bad day. That's a bad day. No, no name. Who's this guy? I don't know who this guy is. So it, wasn't, <laughs> so, so it wasn't just that. It was, there, was a, there was another mistake here. Um, so mm -hmm. I asked you, where do you learn from a teacher? Okay. And here you said, I would say that you learn from a teacher at formal institutions. And so what you did here is you switched to the second person voice and you study linguistics. So you'll know this very, right. very well, right? Um, the author yeah. has three voices. There's subcategories, but generally we mm -hmm. say that there are three voices. You have the first person, the second person, and the third person voice, right? Right, right. Um, and probably at some point one of your teachers hopefully has told you that you shouldn't jump voices when you're communicating so if you start with a first person voice you should carry with the first person voice throughout that part of the conversation or essay as well so if I start talking about I me my myself my life my teachers my instructors my coaches then it should be about my experiences as soon as I bring in the second person voice like your teachers your coaches you 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 it starts to become awkward and more confusing for the listener right yeah I see yeah yeah so in part one mm -hmm. it's usually the first person voice because part one is about you your teachers your experiences your hobbies so you want to keep it as a first person voice so i would say that i learn from a teacher mostly at formal institutions like in my university as i was explaining with my grade 11 uh, english teacher mr rachel right so i can make that connection right all right i'll keep that in mind okay sure. so yeah. i would say that i um learn from uh, teachers at formal institutions like public school uh, and university um, as I had uh, from uh, Mr. Rachel uh, which inspired me to pursue a uh, major in English uh, linguistics at the University of Istanbul. Okay, I'm, I don't. So, sorry, you're in Morocco, but I'm just throwing it out there. Okay. No worries. No worries. Uh, all right. Um, <laughs> so, so, so that's what you want to do. So that's where I'm being really picky. Okay. So clearly, you have very good English. You sound like a native speaker mm -hmm. to me. But for, oh, band, thank you. <laughs> but, but for a band nine, it's not enough to sound native. Mm -hmm. You have to show that you are an expert user of English, which means expert communication. And you have to pay attention to these kinds of uh, details. OK. All right. All right. Um, so good. Let, let me just uh, just to kind of emphasize and strengthen this in your learning. Um, let me repeat the question, read the answer, copy after me. OK. So sure, just good. the second one. So uh, where do you learn from a teacher? I would say that I learn from teachers at formal institutions, mostly like public schools and universities, as I had from Mr. Rachel, which inspired me to pursue a major in English linguistics at the University of Istanbul. Uh, where do you learn from a teacher? I would say that I learn from teachers at formal institutions like public schools and university, as I had from Mr. Rachel which inspired me to pursue a major in English linguistics at the University of Istanbul. Nice. Okay. Do you feel the difference now between that eight, nine level? Oh, yes. I see it now. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay. Awesome. Well, um, keep up the good studies. I think you're going to do a Thank fantastic you. job on your test. Do you have a test date picked out already? Do you know when you're going to do the exam? Oh, yes. After two days. 
on Saturday. Oh, okay. So last minute yeah. tips. Oh, <laughs> yeah. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> right on. I appreciate right. it. Yeah. You're very welcome. Okay. Good luck Thank on you. your test, Yas. We'll see you later. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. See you. Bye. Take care. All right. And yes, I forgot to say, but I hope you come back and share your mark with us. Let us know how you did. Okay. Uh, from one high level student to the next, let's see if Arda is available. Arda, are you here? Let's see if Arda is with us. We haven't talked to Arda in a while. Arda is a long time member of our channel and uh, pops in uh, every now and again to practice some English. It's a good way to do it, students. Um, keep coming back, keep building confidence, keep building uh, fluency. Um, all right, Arda. Hello. Hi, Arda, how are you? I'm good, I'm feeling good. I just passed my exams. I'm great, how are you? Nice, I'm doing uh, better and better. Thanks for asking. When you mean you passed your exams, are you talking about uh, high school standard school exam. exams or school yeah. exams? Um, can you be more specific? Mm -hmm. Can you explain what you mean by that? Uh, I mean, there's some exam weeks that I have to take my exams on. Um, like in terms, I have to take like two uh, exams uh, each term and I just passed one of them and I will take the other one in a month what exam is it specifically like is it math physics or... so like uh, I, I take like 10 exams uh, for each subject like math biology physics uh, chemistry like all, all subjects basically uh, in high school and are these um, government level exams so they're nationally standardized yeah yeah Okay, they so are. very very competitive, right? Yeah, it is. And if if you do a really good job on these exams, like if you're in the top ten percentile, what does that enable you to do? So, what kind of doors does that open for you? Um, well, uh, it's important for university, I could say, for like university entrances, and also like uh, to study abroad. They're really important, like the exam results. Mm -hmm. Are you able to um, get scholarships if you do a good job on these? Well, most probably, yeah. Okay. Like, uh, academic performance is really important for, like, uh, studying abroad, right? Mm -hmm. So, I would say yes. Okay. Yeah, the, the world is definitely moving towards a more standardized education system internationally. So, these standard exams are becoming very important. Okay, Arda. Well, um, speaking of... Uh, IELTS, mm -hmm. uh, International Standard English Testing yep. System, right? So, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> all right, Arda, then uh, let me ask you a couple of questions. So let me get yep. right into it this time. So let's mm -hmm. talk about uh, teachers. Uh, mm -hmm. Where do you learn from a teacher? I learn from my teachers at my high school. It's called Carton Altolian High School. I and my classmates have 12 teachers for each subject. Uh, we're usually learning in the classroom, but if the weather is good, our teacher wants to go to the garden and teach there. My biology teacher actually did that last week. It was fun. Um, okay. Why is it important to be, or sorry, uh, what is important to be a good teacher? Um, oh, um, the personalities of a teacher are the most important features uh, for a good one. Most of the time, uh, being funny, trying to make students smile and learn at the same time. And a good teacher shouldn't get angry in, the most, in most of the situations. They need to control the class and attract students so students become interested in the subject. Okay, um, very nice. All right, very nice. You know what? One more. Let's do one more. Have you ever taught anyone? All right. Um, um, yeah, I have taught biology to my best friend uh, three months ago. We were both preparing for the biology exam, but my best friend couldn't get how a brain works, and I've always been good at biology, so I taught him how our brains work. We both passed the exam with flying colors. He thanked me after the exam. Okay, 
Uh, very nice, Arda. Very nice. Um, yeah, I, 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 I would give you that band nine, honestly, for that, Arda. Thank you. Um, you're, you're doing a really good job. So you're, you're definitely, you paid attention to the advice that I gave you. Us, you kept it to yourself. So all three questions, you made sure that you kept it personal. You realized, okay, this mm -hmm. is part one. First person, There's questions yeah. about me. The, the examiner even says that they, they'll usually say, "I'll ask you some general questions about you to get to about you, you yeah. better." Right. So they really kind mm -hmm. of do emphasize that at the beginning um so you did a good job of keeping it to yourself uh being specific mm -hmm. being original you use some really nice uh, lexical resource like pass the exam with flying colors that means outstanding yep. results of course mm -hmm. okay that was really good um your fluency was good pronunciation um was uh great um Thank you. and uh you really created an uh, what what was really nice here is that you two points okay two points that were just very clearly a band nine for me uh, mm -hmm. one is that you created a very visual experience for me as your listener so um, for instance when I asked you um, where uh, do you learn from a teacher you explained mm -hmm. that okay this is my teachers in high school there are 12 teachers that you learn from and yeah. when it's a nice day your teacher will even go to the garden meaning that you'll learn in the garden so I actually was visually present and I was with you as a student in this high school learning from one of the teachers in the garden and that yeah. kind of communication is very powerful um, what is important to be a good teacher you focused on personality you explained it you said that you know they can have the students smile and learn at the same time they help students become interested in subjects that was great um, I asked you, have you ever taught anyone? Really nice. You said, I have taught biology. So immediately you used the present perfect and you gave a mm -hmm. specific answer. So you said biology to my best friend. Um, and then you specifically explained that your friend couldn't um, get how the brain works. If you yeah. want to get really fancy, you could say central nervous system, but it's fine. Um, and then um, you said he thanked me after the exam and then you stopped. Mm -hmm. That was the other point that you did really well for all three questions is you didn't under speak and you didn't over speak over speak. Yeah. yeah. So um, it's like the story of Goldilocks and the three bears where Goldilocks goes to the bear's house and uh, dad's soup is too hot. Mom's soup is um, too cold and baby bears soup is just right. Uh, in the IELTS <laughs> exam, you have a kind of just right amount of speaking where you're not over speaking, you're not under speaking, but average yeah. you're speaking enough to be clear and that and you did just that okay mm -hmm. so that was really good Arda you you're you're doing very very well um, do you have any oral exams for your government exams where you have to do like a English exam like this orally um, no not from the government but if I want to take like an IELTS exam I have to pay and just go to an exam center but not from the government yeah hmm. Is there? Do you have a an English standard exam from the government? Well, I don't think so. Well, I might be mistaken, but let me just say no. Okay, not. all right, fair enough. A lot of places <laughs> do. That's why I'm asking. Um, okay, Arda, good job. Keep it up. Thank you so much for volunteering and um, showing that nice high band score to everybody. How to get Thank that? You. And what you need to do? Yeah. Keep up the good work, Arda, and good luck on the other Thank exams you. that you've got coming. Yeah, thank you. Okay, bye. See ya. All right, and everybody, I saw that many of you gave some thumbs up to Yas and now to um, Arda as well. Uh, that's really great, okay? Um, support each other. It's really, really important, okay? And don't be shy. If your English isn't quite as good as Arda or as Yas, whatever, it doesn't matter. Just keep talking. I'm sure they weren't that good their whole lives either. Um, they had to learn. So... Uh, Abdu Rashid would like to volunteer. Abdu Rashid, are you ready? Okay, so I'm just uh, I'm kind of moving down the list, but you'll see me jump around randomly as well. So if you're lower down on the list, don't worry. Sometimes I really just kind of hop around. It's not like I'm always systematic here with uh, first, second, third person. So um, Abdu Rashid, give you a few more seconds to respond 
Okay, Abdul Rashid is there. Hi, Abdul Rashid. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. What about you? I'm doing pretty good things. I have more and more energy each day now coming out of this cold, so that's a great feeling. There's an expression in English we say, health is wealth. It's very true. Um, <laughs> all right, uh, Abdul Rashid, um, what should I call you? Full name, Abdul Rashid, or do you have a short version? Mm, uh, you can call me uh, just as it. Abdul Rashid, okay. And where are you right now? Uh, I'm from Uzbekistan. Okay, which part? Uh, in I'm, com I'm from Kokan, actually. Kokan, okay. I'm trying to get familiar with uh, Uzbekistan. We have a lot of, uh, of uh, callers from Uzbekistan, and of course I'm familiar with Tashkent, but that's about it. So I, I, I'd like to get a little bit more familiar with the geography. Okay, Abdul Rashid, why are you doing the IELTS exam? Uh, I want to study um, in the United States this why for my higher education. Okay, do you know what you want to study? Yeah, for uh, computer science. Computer science, all right. Okay, well, let me help you on that journey. Um, I'll ask you a couple of questions, give me some nice full sentence answers, and then I'll give you some feedback with a score estimate. So let's talk about uh, teachers. Okay, um, here we go. Okay. Have you ever taught anyone? Mm. Yeah, uh, I've taught um, math to my uh, sister. Uh, it's about uh, two months ago. Uh, she done very well at uh, in at her exam, and um, she she thanked a lot me to me. If you could teach any subject, what would it be? Um. I think it will be, um, of course, mathematics because I'm good at uh, math. Uh, that's why it's the one uh, I could help to uh, someone who need help. Okay. Um, let me give you some feedback. So that would be about a band uh, six point five. Okay, so just a quick rough estimate okay. off the top of my head. A band 6.5. A band okay. 6.5 means that you are uh, between fluent and good user of the English language. You're definitely fluent. So I can tell that you, you, know, you don't have to think too much about your answer. You've got it in your head. You know what you want to say and you say it. And I can understand it. So okay. I, I know what you're saying. I can understand it. I don't have to really stress myself or say excuse me or okay. come again or what did you say so I don't have to do any of that and I, I feel like I can get into a nice fluent conversation with you and that's fine okay okay um, but I do as your listener immediately pick out some mistakes I'm like ah that grammar is a little bit off that's a little bit of an unnatural way to say that that's I know. A bit of an awkward way to say that so it's those little bit of awkward unnatural grammatical mistakes word choice mistakes that keep your score at the 6.5 level Okay. Okay. Um, all right. I'm, so, go ahead. Yeah, ask me if you have a question. Um, I'm, uh, I'm training uh, my with my speaking, and uh, I'd like to improve it. Yeah, and I'll tell you how. I'll give you a couple of tips. Okay. So um, mm. here, I asked you, have you ever taught anyone? And you said, um, Yeah, I've taught math to my sister. Um, so you contracted the I have, okay? And I picked it up, so I did, I did get it. I, I got that you said I've with the contracted I have. On the IELTS, um, don't contract, not the first time that you use the grammar anyway. So instead of saying I've, um, actually say I have, like emphasize it. So yeah, I have taught math. Uh, to my sister and then you can okay. even repeat it paraphrase it to emphasize it 
I've uh, tutored her uh, several times okay. over the past uh, few years. Okay. Yeah. Uh, last time was uh, about two months ago. So um, just adding some more clarity there, okay? And really emphasizing okay. that present perfect. So yeah, I have taught math to my sister. I've tutored her. And notice how the second time that I'm using the present perfect, that's when I'm contracting it. That's when I'm taking the I have, and okay. then it's called a contraction, and that's when I'm contracting. Contracting means to pull together, right? Contractions are okay. natural, but if the examiner misses the contraction, then they won't give you those grammar marks. So you just want to make that really clear. Okay, so yeah, I have okay. taught math to my sister. I've tutored her several times over the past few years. Last time was about two months ago um, because I'm really good at it. Okay, what's another way to say yeah. math or mathematics? Mm. It starts with an A. Arithmetic. Okay, it's another way mm. to say it. I'll teach that. Okay, too. so math. Another way to say math is arithmetic. Okay. Arithmetic. Okay, you should know that word going into computer science. Okay, um, and then uh, you said she done very well. Uh, she did very well, not done. Or she had done, right? But she did is better here. Just yeah. past, simple past. Okay. She, so she did very well, not at her exam, but on her exam. Okay. And then she thanked me. Uh, you said she thanked a lot to me. Very awkward. Okay. So and then <laughs> she thanked me. So just keep it simple, especially when something when you're saying something so common, right? Mm. Okay, okay. Just repeat this after me. So um, have you ever taught anyone? Yeah, I have taught math to my sister. I've tutored her several times over the past few years. Last time was about two months ago. Um, because I'm really good at it. She did very well on her exam and then she thanked me. Have you ever taught anyone? Yeah, I have taught math to my sister. I've tutored her several times over the past few years. Last time was about two months ago because I'm really good at it. She did very well on her exam and she thanked me. Okay, now, um, the next question I asked you was a conditional. If you could teach any subject, what would it be? And then you just answered very directly. You said, I think it will be, of course, mathematics because I'm good at math. Um, be a little bit creative. Uh, I would probably have gone with a different answer. So um, something like, given the chance uh, to train a person in any field, I would love to be a martial arts coach Uh, because it would be amazing to train the next uh, UFC world champion. I would love to be a Kung Fu master. Okay, I'm just making it up, right? Um, but what's important here is notice this part, given the chance. So given the okay. chance is paraphrasing the if you could. Okay. Um, okay, when you get asked a conditional, make sure that you reflect the conditional in your answer. So don't, in, in everyday conversation, like on the street or with friends, we usually don't do that, you're right. So we usually just give the answer like, oh, I would love to be this. It's much faster and, and, and easier. But on the IELTS, it's good to show that grammar. So um, if you could teach any subject, what would it be? Given the chance to train a person in any field, I would love to be a martial arts coach because it would be amazing to train the next UFC world champion. I would love to be a Kung Fu master. Um, just repeat after me. If you could teach any subject, what would it be? Go ahead. Uh, given the chance to train a person in any field, I would love to be a martial arts coach because it would be amazing to train the next UFC world champion. I would love to be a Kung Fu master. All right. Would you, okay. would you like to be a Kung Fu master? Is that? Yeah. Yeah, I, well, all of us. Yes. I, I would totally be into that. Um, okay, Abdul Rashid, <laughs> uh, thank you so much for volunteering and I think you're on the right path um, to get a great uh, mark. Okay, so it's 6.5 right you. now, but a bit of practice, you'll do okay. much better. All right, you're very welcome. Next time.
Goodbye. I'll talk to you next time with Rashid. Bye for now. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thumbs up for Abdu Rashid. Um, yeah, we're only doing part one today, 1 a.m. Uh, we will be doing part two and part three later in the week as well. Let's take one more uh, volunteer. Um, who should we take? Uh, Amira? Yeah, let's see if Amira is with us. Amira, I would like to voluntary. All right, Amira, are you ready? It's not voluntary, it's volunteer, volunteer, okay. So I would like to volunteer. Um, voluntary is a different word form, like voluntary action. Okay, um, Amira is ready. Hi, Amira. Hey, how are you? <laughs> I'm good. Thank you for asking. All right, Amira. And where are you right now in this big, beautiful world of ours? Uh, I live in Palestine. That's right. I remember now. Palestine. Okay. Um, Amira, um, let's do this. So I'm going to ask you some questions. I'm still talking about teachers. Are you ready? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Okay, so um, who was your favorite teacher? Uh, my favorite teacher was uh, in high school, uh, Fatima. Uh, she was teaching me uh, physics. I really like her, and I like the way she teaches me and make it simple for me to understand that. So that inspired me as well to, to study physics in the first year of my university. Then I changed it for some reason. Have you ever taught anyone? Uh, I'm a teacher, so I do teach biology, and I really enjoy it. And I think uh, uh, that's giving me a good feeling because I'm giving children, I mean, uh, students, and teach them uh, how to, to understand their body. If you could teach any subject, what would it be? Uh, if I have, if I, I want to choose something else, I would be, I will, uh, I would choose for sure to teach English uh, because it's international language. I think it's important for every child and in university, I mean, in school uh, to learn this language and able to be able to speak it. Okay, that's good. All right. Okay, um, overall very good. So that was a solid seven to 7.5 range, okay? So definitely a seven, I would say comfortably. A seven uh, to 7.5 because it's good English. So, so you're speaking fluently to, to me um, and you're speaking with good English and it's somewhere between good and very good potentially. Um, there are a couple of slight oddities um, in your grammar or in your word choice. Um, it does sound to me like a couple of times you get a little bit stuck for the perfect word yeah. in the context, which is fine. Um, read lots, so lots of reading will help you fill in those words that you're looking for in your mind, okay? Um, that's that's I think a good tip um, and speak lots what you're doing right now okay yeah I do speak a lot of native speaker or native speaker of English yeah and really focus on a strong finish so um, for me it feels that your answers uh, start strong um, but then they get a little bit weaker um, near the end you kind of get a little bit lost okay uh, so make sure that you finish. It's just the lost ideas, actually. I don't know what to say. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Answer, explain, example. So when you're lost for an idea, think of an example. I had a biology class yesterday morning at uh, 12 o'clock. Okay. So yeah. that works. So if when you're lost, just finish with a strong example. Um, so when I asked okay. you, have you ever taught anyone? Careful with the grammar. It's present perfect. Okay, and yeah, said, I would say I have. Yeah, I have you, you said 
you said I'm a teacher and I do teach biology so you stuck with the present perfect there I would right away have said I have been teaching biology to high school mm -hmm. students for the past three years okay so nice present perfect progressive I have been teaching biology okay um, and then if you're stuck at the end, you can say, in fact, I taught a class just yesterday from noon till one. Yeah. Okay. So answer, explain, example. The example, that's one of the reasons it's really good to remember is because it lets you finish strong. It lets you finish with emphasis, okay? Um, so let's just practice this one and then uh, it'll firm up that idea, okay? So have you ever taught anyone? I'm a teacher and I do teach biology. I have been teaching this subject in high school for the past three years and I love it. It helps people to learn about their bodies and to live a healthier life. Uh, in fact, I taught a class yesterday from noon until one. Have you ever taught anyone? Uh, yes, uh, I'm a teacher. I've been teaching uh, for since uh, three years. And uh, and I cannot see the screen. I'm sorry. Uh, and uh, in fact, uh, I did uh, a, a lesson today, teaching the students uh, how to understand their body, and uh, and to help to be to to live in a healthy environment. Good. Okay. I have been teaching for three years, not since three years. For three years. Okay. Are you? Okay. Okay, and that's why you want to practice that present perfect is so that you can use it accurately and confidently. Okay, so practice that advanced grammar. It's important. Um, all right. Any questions, Amira? No, thanks. But I want to really to ask a question about the listening. Okay, shoot. Um, Fire away. Ask me a question. Uh, in the listening, I have like problems, especially with uh, section number one. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I get like go to school all and you know, all the the section, but section one, I don't know like just the the spelling when they spelling the words and uh, the numbers or it could be the uh, like any numbers phone like it, I don't know like I'm, I don't do it fast. I need to do something about really, it, but I don't know how to do. Yeah, really listen to uh, phonetics, uh, focus on listening to dictation, okay? Um, so people giving their credit card numbers, their phone numbers. If you have access to our website, um, there's this uh, IELTS audio CDs. I'm just bringing it up on the screen here. And we actually have this uh, bonus speaking at the end uh, where we purposefully um, go through with a British speaker like this. Days of the month. First. And also I have a problem with second, the letters P and P because I don't have it third, in my language. So I miss, I miss it all fourth, the time. Like it, fifth, I know it's like a basic English, it but takes practice. I don't know how to read it. Yeah, it takes practice and different languages have different sounds like in Japanese it's the RL sound for example that's very confusing um, for some other languages it's the THS sound that's confusing so you just have to practice it lots it will come with practice and look um, research a bit of phonetics and articulation online how those sounds are articulated and the phonetics of those sounds and then practice that and that will help you to identify those sounds um, a little bit more accurately okay yeah thanks it'll come though don't like it's not even though it seems really frustrating sometimes it, it will come it will happen okay so don't, don't yeah. give up all right just keep going all right Amira thank you so much for uh, volunteering I really appreciate it thank you for your I should thank you actually <laughs> and then uh, you're very welcome and <laughs> you give I'll me more confidence I'll see you again you're doing great I will see you again in class okay Amira yeah, have a nice day. You too. Bye for now. All right, that was Amira. Give Amira a thumbs up. And we've completely run out of time, everybody. Uh, but worry not. I will be back tomorrow with um, writing task two 
for members, we'll do a whole essay in one class, fun times ahead. And then we'll do a reading uh, passage with everybody, reading strategies tomorrow, more speaking on Saturday. Uh, again, questions about the listening section or other parts of the exam, like with Amira, send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com, right, right up there. Um, visit our website for all of our lesson videos and for great practice, aehelp.com, gieltshelp.com for general IELTS. Use this code ULTIMATE9 uh, for that 25% discount. That's coming from our latest uh, speaking interview video release. That's great, okay? Uh, that's it for today's class, everyone. Thank you, Carolina, for moderating the chat, uh, helping students out. I can see that you did a lot of great work there. That was awesome. Um, thank you, Rashika, Ken, and our members for your support. Thank you, Amrit um, and Engen, for your super chat donations. Have a lovely rest of your Thursday, everybody. Have a great start to your Friday tomorrow, and hopefully I will see you then. I'm Adrian. I'm signing out from Victoria for now. Bye everyone.